Bro, Joe's at Blue Moon Lounge. Oh, shit. And this motherfucker misses a step. And he lands straight on his ass cheek. And he turns up and the camera all uses. I can, he couldn't believe <laughs> yeah, he fell. Yeah. Bro, Let me walk, walk you me through, through it. this. Well, walk right, me, so. Hold on. Play the video. First of all, play the video. Once, five, stole them 20s. Looking dumb in the club, throw no money. Didn't want me, it's so funny. Now nah, they get killed, go get her or go for me. How done made a couple of hundred through pandemic. Hard six Vegas like P, no damn limit. Yo ass nigga, money was short, that damn midget. Lifestyle rubbers won't work, I can't fit it. Then he plus the fuck a Netflix. Get her on the prompt and I'm hitting the next bitch. Bitch, your last nigga don't exist. What's going on, guys? Big Chief here. Welcome back to another episode of To Be Blunt. I'm here with your co-host, D -D DJ Birdwater. Birdwater in the building. You already know what's going on. Light up, smoke up. Before we get into it, like, comment, make sure you subscribe. You know, make sure you follow us on our IG. And yes, let's get to it. As you can see, <coughs> our background is different, huh? Yeah. Different setting. <coughs> we went and moved offices. Yep. We're expanding. We're doing dope shit. So pretty much we moved offices this week. Uh, had to restart our podcast setup. It's the third time we did this. Mm -hmm. And you know, every time we do it, it grows. My current podcast set, uh, setup that I'm building right now is being built ne next week. It's going to be very nice. They're building the walls, building dope things in there. So when the guests do come, they're going to enjoy themselves. And it's going to be a vibe. But it's, it was like, it wasn't even super stressful. It was just like a change. I was so happy with the other podcast room and everything and other office, but sometimes you have to do things to grow. And this is the move we did. And I'm pretty happy about it. And then, Joe, this is the first time for you even being at the office, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, they're still putting up lights. <laughs> my, th my thing has changed, bro. Like, I, it's hard to get accustomed to, but it's a part of life. And in order to grow, you got to have change in your life. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what we could turn this building into. And, our new setup. I know it's going to be even better because we have our own fucking fresh start right here. I separated <laughs> the office part with the uh, with the fun side. Because <laughs> I be smoking every day. I want these people to have like literally the best work environment and then be happy with every single thing. So I did it a way that everyone would be happy. And the squad's in one place. Office is in one place. Same area, same location. So honestly, I'm very happy and very excited about what's to come because next month is april and as you know i'm the big chief and if you haven't smoked big chief in your life you're sleeping under a rock yeah but we have a lot of new skews dropping we have the most iconic cartridge in the world yes we're bringing the live resin live cart live resin live rosin cartridge and just wait how we bring this shit in yeah and we got the two grammar dropping the two grammar Two Shout grammar. out you out there two that grammar smokes two grammar. Crazy. crazy. Hey, tell me when you hit that motherfucker, it knocks you the fuck out. Bro, so It hits harder than the regular cartridge, and the regular so cartridge smooth. fucks me up. And just wait till you guys see the packaging. The design is dope. Everything is dope as fuck, bro. Hey, this year, I'm going to make sure I'm there for 420, because last year I had food poisoning, bro. Bro? Yeah. No, I caught the flu. That's what it was. I caught the flu around 420 last year. I still remember. I was so hot. And, and this year, I hope, you know, I'm not sick. I'm not anything. So I could be there. 420 is like the Christmas of, of each year for us. You know 420 I mean? is always special. Always yeah. been special for me, even when I was a consumer, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But last year, during 420, I was fasting. It moves up 15 days every year. So I started fasting already. This is my fifth day. This is like the fifth day of fasting. Uh -huh. And uh, pretty much first week is like over is on Sunday. You know what I mean? Then it ends on like, I believe on April 10th, April 11th is Eid. Okay. But last year I was, fa uh, I was fasting during Ramadan. But this year during, I mean, I was fasting during Ramadan for sure. But I was fasting during 420. But uh, this year coming off for 420, we're going to be... <coughs> Not only in LA, but we're gonna be in uh, Houston, Miami, and New York on 420, all the same day. Yeah. So, yeah. and then in New York, I have something special for you guys. Miami, I have something special for you guys, and Texas too, and LA. Uh, so, me and my brother and the team curated certain places by the demographic and how everything is for these events. So, Texas, you're really gonna enjoy yours. New York and Florida, you're gonna enjoy yours, and LA have some uh, something special for you too. But 420, truly, bro. It's the most like for for any brand or trap or anything. Yeah. 
Uh, beginning of 420, busy as a motherfucker. Yeah. Everyone got their money back because Christmas over three months from yeah. now. There's, there's a lot of money flowing through this, but it's a beautiful, perfect, amazing time to drop new SKUs. <coughs> and so some of these SKUs we've been working on for over two years, some around two years. You know how the market, every single thing changes. Some updated and innovated to the way they're supposed to be. And I'm very happy. Uh, quality control team that I hired is amazing. Uh, distro is amazing. So actually, you want to know something crazy though? I normally every every year I do a hall of flowers booth, but since we were moving, I didn't. I was like, let me walk it this year. Yeah. So pretty much, I went with Anwar, Omar, my homie Dylan, and Omar from Blue Moon. We're mobbing up there, and I told Anwar, "It's funny, bro. This is hilarious." I go, "Hey, bro." I get really excited to do this. He goes, why? I go, bro, this is my fucking air. This is my environment. Mm -hmm. So we pull up to the place, right? I had tickets and everything. I didn't even fucking need a ticket, bro. I have my backpack on me. I got shit full of backpack. I walk in. Right when I walk in, the security starts tripping out. Yeah. Big chief. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a good day. You know what I mean? And I truly appreciate this because like, this is, this is amazing. It's so surreal to me. It didn't even feel real, bro. Every five feet I was walking, someone would, like someone would come over, and then a bunch of people would just mob, uh, and then a bunch of dispensaries would pull up, right? Yeah. Bro, it took me 30 minutes to walk 100 yards. Oh, shit. It was wild. It was pretty fucking wild. I was trying to get lunch for a while, and the homie was like, you want to meet Gunna? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I met the owner of the dispensary and the brand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was traditional, you mm-hmm. know? So I locked in with, I've been locked in with them, but I was just chopping over them, but I thought that was the what funniest thing. What city was Hall of Fires this time? Is in Ventura, California. Ventura, oh, okay, okay. But uh, a lot of brands were there, but <coughs> I got I have a dispensary too. But I picked up like a lot of new stores, bro. A lot of big stores, but they're the way they came up and approached me, bro, was different. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed it, bro. There was a lot of love shown because I know I put in. I forget too sometimes, but I've done put a lot of work in with my brother day in day out. I've been to every single dispensary and I met majority of the industry. I know them. If yeah. you're in the industry, we've met before. Yeah. Like really for real. For if we're if we're really in the cannabis industry, we probably talked and had a conversation or we know about each other. Exactly. And when I'm going to these areas, Anwar, bro, he thought he was gonna get approached. He, people gave him the camera to take pictures of me and he was having the best time of his life. Like I was like, bro, this is a skit. Dope. When your when your friend is more famous than you and you're more famous than your friend. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anwar has like 15 million yeah. followers on Instagram alone. Yep. But and I have only have like eleven k. You know what I mean? Views. Bro has like hundreds of millions, millions of views. of views. But it's the point where what I do in my industry, I know I'm one of the best at, and I have so good relationships with my peers in my industry. It's just fucking dope doing what I. I love what I do. I told Anwar that day. I go, you know what makes it easier for me to just like wake up in the morning? It's like I get to do what I fucking love. I get yeah. to smoke weed. I get to sell weed. I get to make weed. I get to yeah. innovate weed. Yeah. I get to spread weed. You know, and and it's bigger than that. So you know, yeah, I'm the, just saying that, but it's bigger than that. The cannabis community is so amazing, bro. Like, it, it's not hostile. It's not. Ne- uh, well, it could be. It, it's it could like be. everyone knows each other. So if you do bad <laughs> business, if you do bad business, everyone fucking knows. Like a lot of these shop, uh, like a lot of these dispensaries, Joe. They don't pay. They don't want to pay. And then they, they, they sell the thing and go do other thing and they're doing bullshit ass business. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a lot of brands that put up bullshit in the stores too. Don't get it twisted, bro. Yeah. And they give consumers bullshit. Yeah, How, no. I, 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 Industry is good and bad at the same time. It's a yeah. balance, bro. But all the good players, we fuck with each other. I guess what I mean is like, the, it's such a... Uh, like, weed is a great thing. It's an amazing fucking plant. You know what I mean? What it does to you. And then I feel like that aura or whatever behind weed, you know, carries. But yes, besides, like, all the bullshit behind business, like, when I go to weed events and, and I see people that know me through Big Chief and I've met before through the other events when we first started and it's all love, it's like, it's all genuine, organic love. Then we chill with them. We smoke at the weed events that we throw we throw and shit like that. Like, it's all fucking good love, good energy. Everyone just likes to talk, smoke weed, and it's just a great community, bro. And it's really good chance, like, when you're around, like, networking like that, Joe, when yeah. you get face-to-face with somebody and you're doing your thing and you're, they're doing their thing, yeah. it's like a mutual respect hit different, bro. Because you'll be talking to somebody and you'll be like, oh, shit. Yep. It's finally a pleasure meeting you. And I, and I always give them their flowers. I always yeah. tell them my favorite thing from their brand. And they don't even expect me to even fucking know that shit, bro. And, and vice versa, bro. Yeah. 
And then people literally showed me so much love this weekend. If you're a hall of flowers and you talk to me and I don't get too much time to talk to you and you just tell me what's up, like, I fucking love you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, thank you for supporting me. And each one of you out there <laughs> that came up to me and told me my brand was going to be what it is, thank you for believing me because yeah. you still come up to me and tell me and get more excited than me sometimes. And I'd be yeah. hyped, you know? But yeah, I'm not, I'm not what a lie. feeling. Our last time we went hall of flowers up north with Mac and then we drove to San Fran, that's still one of, like, my best, like, favorite trips because it was so scenic it was with the homies we fucking drove you know we we went from the we handle our business and then we rather than just call it a day we we're like you know what let's just drive let's go see the golden gate yeah, bridge let's put bro. a let's put a drone up there type shit you know and, what i mean and i still love that day i still think about it like that was a dope fucking day so whenever you talk about holly flowers or the, they all that always pops san fran up. was dope yeah it was right? san fran was dope i would love lie. to just go there and just you know spend a weekend there you know what i mean maybe when you're done with ramadan no 100 yeah. you know where all my friends are moving to now where miami yeah my friends are like at least cool but like Miami, bro, there's, I'm not going to lie to you right now. Currently, let's totally be honest. I am an alien. I'm from LA. I'm not leaving anytime soon, yeah. but I'm definitely buying a place in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm buying a place in Houston, and then I'm buying a condo in New York. I feel like Miami, Got to. I feel like ding, ding, Miami ding, ding, is like ding, just ding, ding. the next new LA, but fresh, like a fresh start. Literally just ocean water, like you know, like the weather's vibe. amazing. Yeah, weather's you feel amazing. Me? Women are beautiful. <coughs> Business is good. Money is flowing. Yeah, LA, you can't like we were talking about. If you watch the Unwar Omar pod, you got to be really careful wearing your jewelry out here, even yeah. in Miami. But you don't have to worry as much in Miami like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. as you do in LA. But for like pros and cons, why just talk about like moving to Miami? Why would it be good for you? Uh, opens a whole different network. It does. And yeah. it opens a whole different demographic of people fucking with your brand when they mm -hmm. do and then they get interact with you. Yep. And there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of money. A lot of money there. Um, I just feel like literally like it's smart for people that if you're definitely trying to grow a business or you're in the cannabis industry, you know, go network in Miami. There's a shitload of money over there, bro. If a lot of rappers uh, exactly. over there. People are moving over there right now. Like people don't want to be in L.A., People can all you can always come back to LA and visit. You know, I don't plan on moving soon, but I definitely would you would you ever move to Miami if you had a chance? I wouldn't if move it makes there, sense but to you? if if I would buy like a nice condo or you know penthouse out there if possible, right over the beach and go out there once a month for sure. You I'm definitely I mean? about to like get my shit correct and move to different places because you cannot stay if you want to scale. You cannot just stay in one place and try mm -hmm. to scale. You have to like go to multiple places, meet multiple people, and now you're scaling faster than you ever before. Build a team, yeah. put those people out there. You know what I mean? I'm about to, I'm about to have a cameraman in every city. I'm about to have a, pho a photographer in every city. I'm about to have a graphic designer in every city to do me something if I want to certain <laughs> event. Go there that day and go do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Type shit. <laughs> you good, bro? Like, like me personally, mm -hmm. I knew if I went out to Miami for a week. I turned that week into money, bro, by being around certain people, using my connection resources to put me in certain situations around certain people who who would, you know, I could do business with. And and yeah, like that's how I'd go about it. And I was talking to Slim the other day because uh, Brandon, OT's manager, we were playing duty. And he's like, I'm about to move out there. I'm like, that's smart. That's one so of the I first like, people. Him, my barber. <coughs> yeah, I'm like, that's bunch smart, of bro. Like you're plugged in. Slim's gonna go out there. He's trying to. He's thinking about moving out there or getting a spot out there. I'm like, that's dope. Cause if I have more people out there that I genuinely know, that'll make it easier for me to move out there. Bro, there's two kids out there in Miami right now, uh -huh. and they've been fucking with us for like six years. The biggest fucking Big Chief fans, and they're so on top of it, bro. They were like, "We're Big Chief Miami." Yeah. Bro, I'm not gonna lie to you. I started fucking with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, I know you're watching this out there. You guys did it oh, correct. I know what you're talking about. You guys I did it fucking correct. Yeah. You embodied the brand. Yeah. And then you had you gave us no choice but to look at you motherfuckers and be like, damn, you some good ass people. I got a question. I got for something you. special for y'all for 420. Don't worry about nothing. I have a question for you. What do you how do you feel like about that? Like when people truly embodied Big Chief, like if they do it correctly, I yeah. support the fuck out Hell of it. Yeah, like bro. if you're doing it correct, I will literally support the fuck out of you, whatever you fucking need. You know what I mean? Type yeah. shit. If you're not doing it correctly, I'm like, hey, bro, like, do it like this or don't do it at all. Because that's not what we stand for. Yeah. I stand for the dreamers out there that want to mm -hmm. go chase their dreams, not about the money, not about everything, because then you can make that from there. I'm yep. from the ones that 
lost, got half stuff and went to zero and got it back. Yep. That's what my shit stands for. And I really support people like that. I support people aiming to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. People that want to grow and don't want to be stuck in the same place and have ambitions and inspire the environment of being great. If you can get my brand and go do that, I fucking love it. You know what I mean? So that's what it stands for. Imagine you, AMG, random mm -hmm. motherfucking Ohio, 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 right? Yeah. Up there and body AMG to the death of it. You know what I mean? And they get AMG tattoos, AMG everything, and they hit you up every day. Be like, yeah. bro, I, thank you for this. You know what I mean? This is something <laughs> I, that I can be a part of. <laughs> that makes I, you feel I, different. I kind of already been getting that already. So I agree with you because I got someone I got someone in New York that we met when we threw our New York event out there. Networking. Yeah, and then I got someone who we met in Houston who actually lives in Cincinnati. They love AMG, bro. They want merch. They fucking smoke my shit. <laughs> Shout they out Ohio. They post it, bro. Like, they're really out here. Like, I'm getting that. So I see the movement. I see the potential of the AMG. And, and honestly, like, with my uh, experience and knowledge through what we've done with Big Chief, bro, like, I know I could scale this business to a multi-million, if not billion-dollar business. It's just going to take time, which I have plenty of time. You know let, what I mean? Let me give you an example. Another one on top of this. I love this one. Shout out Levi. Levi oh, yeah. is Big Chief Nevada, right? This guy is the level of taking it to the next level. We, you know, uh, UFC fight card uh, uh, before the oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. before the fucking people go like they're like seven one and ten and one, mm -hmm. and they're going becoming trying to become on the UFC card. They have to fight these fights, right? Right. We all start somewhere, bro. We got offered to fucking sponsor the event, and That's we did, lit. and they took care of us on every single thing. They were like, "We fuck with Big Chief. When It'll just be fight? perfect." It's like April or Let's March sixteenth. Is go. March? I think it's next week. Would you be not 16 no. like March 20 something? I gotta check. What's the day, Aldo? We're, I'm going. Let's go. I want to go. March 22nd, Las March Vegas. 22nd? I'm it's at the go. Sahara, right? What day is that? Yeah, Sahara. it's at the Sahara. It's a Saturday, huh? Next Friday. Oh, it's a Friday. Oh, bro. Probably I have to shoot go. a pot on Thursday and go. Yeah, I'll hey, probably but, dip out. But early watch. Friday. Ooh, watch that it. watch someone get knocked out on the big chief logo and yeah. it's right next to it give me a picture of that and the person standing up there <laughs> knocked down next to the big chief logo and standing up on top of the big chief logo bro i'm gonna go it's on I'm the gonna, you see I'm, where the logo's at though? wait i'm gonna go friday because I, I haven't i need to go i want to go see that i've always wanted to go to ufc fight and i'm gonna make that a crazy one night bender bro I've never been to a UFC fight either. I think yeah. that's my first that's one. And these, excited. and these fighters are good. They only yeah. have one losses each. That's lit as fuck, bro. I've seen that and shit on a group message. But that's dope, bro. Let's let's kind of jump back into because uh, earlier before we start, we were talking about what you're going to do with streaming because I've been talking to Mac the last few weeks. Like, I'm just going to do it. But before I, I tell you why I want to do it, let's talk about your idea because I think that's a dope-ass fucking idea. And I feel like... More and more people are just gonna want to watch what's going on. You want to talk about it? Yeah. So <coughs> I'm about to start a stream up for the office stream. So a lot of people wonder what we do all day, right? And I'm gonna let y'all at least once or twice a week come into these conversations and listen to what we're talking about. I'm putting cameras all in the uh, office where my, it's gonna be mic'd up and everyone's gonna be doing what they're doing. And then pretty much they're gonna is just gonna and we're just gonna get the best parts and make little like uh clips out of it you know what i mean but yeah. pretty much you guys can see when we're in fucking meetings and how we proceed our meetings and talk about our meetings and how we go forward to it yeah and that, how we come up with these certain ideas to create and then pretty much put them in an event so y'all can literally watch how when we create the idea and go to the fucking event that we create exactly. and then you know how it what it takes to go in there and then you actually enjoy it more and then Pretty much the fan base that really fucks with us can be a part of every single thing even more mm -hmm. and understand something. They're going to get so much behind the scenes shit, bro, and people love that. You, people you'll love see that. why the way we are all the time, how we carry ourselves and everything, it's not, just not on this camera. Yeah. When we get off camera, it's the same thing, you know what I mean? Right. That's why I enjoy coming here and giving you guys a recap of what's been going on, what's happening with the brand, what we're doing, because without you guys, none of this is possible. And, yeah. I, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm for the people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm the people's champ. Yeah. And if it's not for the people, whose champ would I be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I love when I interact with people and even if they're a weed smoker, then I put them on my brand and they go, come up to me and be like, damn, I see your brand everywhere. Like, right? Cause they don't know about it. And then they start seeing it and seeing right, it and right. seeing it. They're like, bro, this is so cool. And they embody it, bro. Mm -hmm. So imagine that person that I told about my brand they go into my live stream and Twitch or Kick or Rumble, whatever I'm going to do. Yeah. 
And they're gonna feel it, and then on the same aspect, I'm gonna go stream behind the desk too mm -hmm. and uh, answer people's questions mm -hmm. about certain things and talk about topics like how we used to do back then yeah, yeah. when I first started. It was good, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. just didn't have the traction yet. Right, right, right. But uh, I'm gonna give it another chance. You know what I mean? I never gave up on it. Yeah. And then also, I'm I'm still making music. Don't worry yeah. about it. Big Chief in the studio. You know what I mean? No, so that's gonna be dope. To well, see what's your well. stream about? So like basically, bro, like. You know, I'm all about just opening new ideas, trying to create multiple streams of revenue. But at the same time, like, you know, I, I've the bugs that got me on Call of Duty a couple of years back. Right. And r right now I'm back on it. And I'm like, bro, I spend like three hours minimum a day playing, sometimes four if I depend on if I can't sleep. And That's shit. a lot. Yeah. With the homies like we play like me, Ruben, Slim and Lonnie, we we're playing till like three o'clock the other night, bro. And we started at like fucking 10 30, 11 o'clock. So I'm like, and we play every day, every fucking day, bro. And I have a back house, my man cave. I'm about to just flip that bitch, and I'm going to basically start streaming on kick and maybe another one. But right now, my only focus is on kick because as of right now that I know from my research of what I've seen, you could damn near do almost anything, and you could still be okay. They're not, like, as sensitive as YouTube and 100%. shit like that. 100%. So that's why I'm going to focus on kick. And then from a business standpoint... You know, I, I found out that Aiden Ross said that, like, they're offering people salary, too. Yeah, they're paying. Requirements. So and, I'm like, hold up. And you can get sponsorships, too, like gaming <laughs> yeah. chair sponsors, clothing sponsors, yeah. headphone sponsors. That's So at the end of the day, I'm like, bro, I, I do love playing Call of Duty. I Like I said, I play it every day. You know what I mean? Uh, after, like, when my son's asleep and I'm just chilling at night because I can't go to sleep. Bro. <laughs> I, I literally have insomnia, bro. But so it's like I rather I play Call of Duty. I've gotten better at it, and fuck it, why not stream? I I'm I be talking shit. I'm a character. You know what I mean? Like fuck it. I don't. I I love the idea of you doing yeah. that. I think that's proactive. And then not just that too. Like I'm also good. Like there's shit that I do throughout the day. Like you know, how, like you're gonna have the office and shit like that. When I have shit going on, like uh, next month, we're, me and Bodega, we're gonna throw a collab. A uh, weed event for a uh, little, you know, 420 month. Nice. And we're, I'm going to stream that bitch too. You know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of shit going on that. You know how Yuri has a backpack and goes streams everywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how much it costs? Huh? Three bands. What? That streaming backpack. So, uh, pretty much, you, it's a camera on the backpack and there's a computer inside the backpack and you just walk around. What? Yeah, that's what uh, Yuri does. I've been on Yuri's backpack in a real life stream. People, a lot of people do. I've it. seen it. I've yeah, seen it. So, I've been, on that I've been on that stream five, six times. Yeah, and people watch that motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't realize. Every time Yuri comes up to me in the backpack stream, I'm popping, doing my thing, and he catches <laughs> me in my environment. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I fuck with you. Shout, yeah. shout out to Yuri. But, but yeah, uh, back, Yuri back really inspired people doing the. In I'm not gonna lie to you. Yuri, you're the first person I seen do the backpack stream. Yeah. I know there's a lot of other people do it. Uh, Neon does it too. He's like the first person I looked at as like this. Uh, bro has no limitations, no boundaries. He's gonna do anything he could. Think Neon of. or Yuri? Yuri. Oh yeah, He's Yuri is the content wild, he anything content cool, crazy. just anything you could think of, bro. Like bro forty-eight was, hour stream, yeah. twenty-four hour stream, bro, one week stream. Bro went to Rail to go do a fucking uh, massage. I thought they were gonna do happy ending type massage, but it was just regular. They didn't get in because of camera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's that's cool. You could do whatever, and that's my point. Like I'm like I still do a lot of shit. Like and I've I've calmed down. I could still go do more shit. You know what I mean? So I have a lot to offer, and not just that. Like bro, like. I'm a character, bro. Like, especially when I get lit, Burwater's crazy. You know no, what I mean? You're gonna, gonna get you gonna get lit on your thing playing Call of Duty. It's gonna be crazy. No, I'm uh, dog. I have the funniest video of you. Whoa, Three whoa. people sent it to me, bro. Joe's at Blue Moon Lounge. Oh shit! And bro. this motherfucker misses a step, and he lands straight on his ass cheek, and he turns up, and the camera all uses. <gasps> I can, he couldn't believe <laughs> yeah, he fell. Yeah. Bro, let me walk, walk you me through, through this. Well, walk right, me, so. hold on. Play the video. First of all, play the video. Okay, can I ask you a question before you yeah, get into it? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the girl walking by with the fat ass, right? No, no, no. Okay, because I thought uh, you were looking at the girl with the fat ass and Mrs. Stairs, and then you fell down, on, and you looked up, and you looked at her, and you looked up, and you were like, I can't believe I <laughs> fell. Damn. So That's what it looked like. Let me, let me walk you through it. So I had to go take a piss because I was drinking, you know what I'm saying, smoking, chilling. But what I always do is when I get up before I walk anywhere, I kind of observe 
like what's going on so i know where to walk so i miscalculated and i slipped so it looks like i missed a step but the way i came down i actually slipped bro and there's a step we're uh, we're on like the section that we're on there's a step right there there's two steps Bink, bink. Okay, like then. Damn, I missed one. That's probably what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, bro, but I will. I my face was like that because my ass was hurting. It's still bruised right now, bro. It's I thought black. you couldn't believe you fell. You no, like, no, that part too. Because I, no, like honestly, normally I'd probably be a little embarrassed, but like I wasn't because I'm around the homies and you guys know. You know what I'm saying? You're standing next to Omar, bro. Yeah, and then I was actually in pain. But like I landed, good thing I only landed on my ass cheek because it was the crack of the the end of the the step. It could have been real bad. But you would have broke your ass. Pause, bro. I my you would have had two cracks, tailbone, all that. But luckily, it was just my ass cheek, and it took me a while, bro. Like it, that's why I made the face. I even washed it back because I remember. We're in the restroom taking a piss. Like what the why the how? I was go I through was, that go through that restroom thing. Bro, weird. I'm taking a piss right. On my, my hand back here is rubbing my fucking ass cheek. <laughs> Trying because that shit, I was like, ah, like, ah, no, but oh, hold on. Oh, this is funny you brought it up. So, Omar, right, helps me up, and I'm like, I make you the face, and I am like in shock because I just fell. I usually have good balance, but bro, I slip, and I'm like, ah, like, fuck. And then, like, I'm talking to Omar, and he's like, you good? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. And I'm looking around, I was like, I didn't even care that I fell, it was just the pain. But then Omar's like, where are you going? I was like, I gotta go to the restroom. I was like, I'm good, I'm going. And he tells his security, right? Yo, take him to the restroom, bro. He's he's VIP. Make sure he gets there safe and back. Like, boom. And the security gets me. And then, bro, we go to the restroom. I didn't expect all this extra shit, but, you know, shout out security. That was love. Make sure I was good. But, bro, was we were about to, We cut the line, right? And there was an a, a older OG waiting. And he's like, hey, bro, I've been waiting. And the security goes, nah, he's got to go first. Like, I got to get him to the restroom and get him back. He's like, nah, he could wait after me. I was like, bro, I ain't tripping. Like, I'll wait, you know? And he's like, nah. And his security was holding his ground. He was standing on business, bro. He's like, nah. The owner told me this VIP client, he's got to go to the restroom. He's going to go ahead of you. And then you could go after him. He's like, nah, I ain't with that, bro. And then he's like, nah. Like, they're arguing. I was like, nah, just let him, bro. I was like, I ain't about to fight right now over this bullshit. I would have let security fight. I probably would have helped, maybe, depending. You know what I'm You would have had to help security. Yeah, I would have. I probably would have. You would have had to help the security. Just because I'm. Because that's the homeboy you're trying I'm to low, stand on I'm business with, for you. I'm with the shit. But like, so basically, like I was like, I was telling security, I was like, just let him go, bro. It's, it's good. And security was hot about it, but yeah, we let him go. Tell me why, like I'm leaving the restroom, bro. And then bro, bro was like really like on his shit, bro. Like he's like, yo, on me, bro. Like I'm, a, I'm gonna pull you by your shirt. Just follow me. I was like, all right, whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like extra tight shit. Shout but, out Omar, bro. Yeah, they really take I, care of us. No, bro. that's I, I, I was like, bro, like bro was doing the most, but like it was cool, you know. I respect it. And at the end of the day, yeah, shout out Omar. Shout out to the team. Like I said, it's family out there. I got that Princess Cut Gelato on me. Don't worry, Omar. Yeah, but, yeah, bro, I can't. I was, then my ass is still black right now, bro. Oh, it's bruised up, bro. Damn. And, and you could feel it. it you could just feel the blood. I don't want to feel blood. it. I don't want to feel your ass, bro. <laughs> no one wants to feel your ass, bro. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Hey, bro, let's go to the next conversation, bro. Yeah, We're talking yeah, about yeah. black ass. <laughs> but yeah, hey, stay tuned for both our uh, live streams. About to be lit. If you guys really want to see some dope content, make sure you guys stay tuned. Stay tapped in. And, and yeah. We're always going to give y'all uh, y'all the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But since we're on social media topics, let's talk, talk about, about TikTok. Everyone knows, you've seen it if you're on social media, that they're trying to get rid of TikTok because they want them to sell it to the company another company or they can't keep it because it's a Chinese entity. It's Chinese, exactly. So the U.S. is like, we're going to ban TikTok here. Yep. And then, honestly, I got a, people, a couple people's opinion on it. I love TikTok. I think TikTok made a lot of people uh, money, made yeah. a lot of people, uh, give people platform to like, become famous lives. and change yeah. their lives, you know? <coughs> Same thing that Instagram did, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, uh, MySpace, yeah. like uh, there's Uvu, all that shit. There's yeah. different types. There's different YouTube. levels of YouTube. But you you were telling me you were talking to Anwar. So I, I was hear talking to Anwar about this. So he's I, big on social media. So I was writing with Anwar to uh, Hall of Flowers, and I was like, "Hey, yo, since you do TikTok content, like, what do you feel about like TikTok going down? Uh, and if it does get down, he goes." Uh, he's like, I wouldn't be mad about it because I have 15 million followers on uh, Instagram, and that will bring the TikTok uh, money to Instagram, and people will actually 
uh, it will actually benefit me and mm. other people that are in the same boat I am. Yeah. And I go, damn, because I go, how about the people on TikTok? He goes, some of them will probably have tw- like 10, 15 million, a lot of millions and millions on uh, TikTok, but yeah, they only have quarter bit. million uh, followers on Instagram. Yeah, you know what that. I mean? And I see it all the time. And but if it does happen, the Instagram people that are on Instagram with high following or just Instagram alone in general yeah. will grow because Instagram added the reels, which are really good now. They used to be boring as fuck, yeah. but their reels are getting better. They just added AI. If you go to your DMs, there's a little colorful circle. You could talk to your uh, Instagram now about anything and it'll give you ideas. And then pretty much, uh, I don't know, bro. This is like, how do you feel about if so, Okay, what if TikTok goes down or uh, what? <laughs> so what do you even feel? Hold on. The better question is here, Joe. What do you feel about the United States punking China into be that, like, that's be like, hey, you have to, to sell this yeah. motherfucker. You feel me? <laughs> and, or you can't keep US. it. You feel yeah. me? How do you feel about that? Do you think that's bully ball or do you think that's security so, issue? So one thing, I'll, I'll go back to what we were talking about first, like how you're talking about it, what Anwar said. Shout out to Anwar. It's, it's so, that's why it's so important you guys to have multiple streams of income and in different ways in case shit like this happens. But... At the same time, too, honestly, bro, like, it's going to hurt a lot of people. It's going to affect a lot of individuals, and that's how I think about it because there's a lot of people that weren't good at shit, had shitty-ass jobs, and they start creating content, and now they're living good, you know? Now they're seeing good money coming in. Not just that. People, they're inspiring people or making people laugh or whatever it is, you know? And at the end of the day, bro, I feel like it's fucked up because that's what I wanted to bring it to. This is the type of world we're in, bro, where... It doesn't make sense. Like it's, I feel like it's double standards. You know what I mean? I feel it like is a double standard. If it makes sense for the pockets of the U.S., then okay, let's do it. And that's why I feel like they're trying to get it to send them. But my thing too is the U.S. Whoever's controlling this world isn't for the people. They're for their own, their own reason. self, their own position, whatever their job is. And, and unfortunately, that's just what it is. But it's fucked up because we should have our own say of what we want to use. Whether it's from whatever whatever country, because I'm pretty sure a lot of what we buy and wholesale and what people sell, big companies, they manufacture their shit from China. where? China. So if that's the case, do you think it could lead to the point where we completely cut out China? Bro, the price of everything in the United States is going to go up. Okay, you've been on TikTok and you scroll down. How many ads do you see now of people with the a commission lot. thing now right a lot right a lot. Every, where's that stuff coming from china fucking china who's making bro. the money though on it straight up like who's straight up making the money off the things on the website they're promoting in straight china, china even yeah. if it comes to the u.s it's sold to the U, uh, u.s person right mm-hmm. and then they make money off it from the taxes and everything yeah you feel me you know you know where the money's going you know where they're getting american dollars so america's like hell no we're yeah. missing the bag out our economy and money going out on this platform yeah you got to sell it to a company which interests the United States, and they're like, we'll keep it. Yeah. Pretty much that's the conversation right now. Yeah, exactly. But you want to know something? I talked to my mom. I was like, hey, because she was going to like uh, like the rural parts of Pakistan, right? Like where we originally come from, where like they got the farms and stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So my mom, uh, my mom goes over there, and I go, how was it? She goes... Bro, the old ladies were on TikTok over there. <laughs> they had their own TikTok stuff going on. They got a little shitty ass phone scrolling to TikTok, making TikTok videos all day out there. Yep. And there's nothing. Very impactful. And I platform. go, what the fuck? TikTok has impact like that? Bro, my parents be sending me TikTok videos. And I'll be like, damn, bro, that shit's big, big, bro. Big, like, bro. I think it's the biggest <laughs> platform right now. Do you agree or no? Do you think TikTok I think is... TikTok. I, I think the biggest platform right now is TikTok. I think it's TikTok, bro. Now they were like trying for years to do something yeah. about it, trying to multiple ways to ban it. They've been talking about this and for a long time. In my opinion, it's the most influential uh, uh, app right now or platform, TikTok. D- did you hear about the Chinese person that owns the app talk? Yeah, I've seen the video. He's very smart. Yeah, very... He's very intru- intelligent. He apologized, you know. Um, I hope they figure it out. Now, I'll, I'll answer this before I ask you, but... You know, my question is to you, but I'll answer first is, you know, how do you think they're going to get through this? Because at the end of the day, you can't give up something like that completely. My opinion, I feel like the way he's going to do it, he's going to find a business partner that's American, Chinese, and they're going to do some under the table type shit. And yeah, he's going to sell the business just to keep that going still. But how do you think it's going to go? It's going to go. They're not dumb. Yeah. There's always a will. There's always a way. Yeah. There's always a chunk of change that you have to pay. 
in order for things to like literally be let go. You already know about this. We talk yeah. about this all the fucking time. It's all about the money play, bro. Yeah. But it's affecting millions of lives, bro. Like mm. I was saying, like you were saying, you know what I mean? So yeah. now I'm saying, I think taking TikTok down initially wouldn't be horrible because we could have lived without it. Mm. But it's a creative aspect of the creative challenges and the creating, yeah. not all the good challenges, but they're creating challenges. A toaster motherfucker, you dumb mm -hmm. as hell. Mm -hmm. But it created, brought people together, bro. And now you're taking that away and the people are like, no, you're yeah. not taking my TikTok away yeah. type shit. You know what I mean? So I think it brings people together and they're taking away something that brings people together and yeah. hurting the people. But in a big aspect of uh, thing, of the U.S. is saying is national security. Mm -hmm. uh, how come every other country is not saying that though? Yeah, no, it's just. It's and then, but they're letting to a point where they're letting Chinese people come in through Mexico, and Arizona. I'm from Mexico, through Arizona, Texas, and everything. Shout out my immigrant people. But uh, you feel me? So it's like pick and choose, double standard, like yeah. you said. You know, I just feel like it. That's just like things are just gonna get worse for this country, um, and more. When expensive. does it get better though? Yeah, I don't. Or right, if, if you want to ask me that question, I feel like the only way life gets better is with money. 100%. Because that's where this world, is, this our country is driving everything towards. Everything's based off money, money-based. The saddest thing is, do you know how they make money? War. Yeah. <laughs> Conflict. <laughs> Conflict. Yeah. Yeah. That's how money's made, if you yeah. really want to know. You feel me? So the people who control this world uh, literally uh, funded both sides of World War One, World War Two. Uh, and every single war that's going on right now. It is sick, bro. Like, yeah. every single thing that... Uh, I'm, I wouldn't want to mention, like, straight up places, but there's places that you guys eat coffee, eat burgers from, and every single thing that is related to these people funding this war as well. Yeah. And then when they do that, you know what I mean? That's the loan money. You know what I mean? That's what they're making money from. So mm -hmm. it's like... It's very hurtful how they make money, but money does make a, lo uh, a lot of things easier because... You know what I think it is, though? Money makes the world go But around. you know what I really think it is, bro? What? It's not the money. It's the influence. People don't like to work, right? Because they get paid really little for what uh, what they can't even afford, right? Yeah. Imagine people getting working the same, uh, whatever they're working right now, but getting paid the same, but the uh, inflation is uh -huh. insane how it is right now, right? Inflation made yeah. the price of dollar go high because it's not backed by gold. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. If it's not backed by gold, it's to the Federal Reserve. You know what I mean? So they're printing money that doesn't even exist. Right. At the end of the day, uh, you know how we have to pay the wars back? That tax dollars. Yeah. So when those tax dollars go, we go pay that, right? We're yeah. paying that loan off because right. for the rich people that the government borrowed from. Because the rich people lent to the government mm -hmm. and the government pays through the tax dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I believe if they back there, let me see that. Let me see that gold brick in front, bar in front of you. Let me see that bar in front of you. Hold one too. Hold one. No, my hands are full. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but you, it's all good. But you see this gold bar? If they backed it up by this thing, we would have not had the inflation we had, and people would have had uh, like buy houses, yeah. buy their cars, send their kids to college, and love bought a boat, love what they did, right? Yeah. And still be happy out working and take pride in working. Feel me? Mm -hmm. So just the inflation ruins a lot of <laughs> Americans' things to and make them even lazier. And now they don't want to work and make money. Yeah. But if they worked and they made this uh, good amount of money that they did, right? Because back in the day, you made fifty thousand dollars. That's equivalent of making uh, like quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. Type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the dollar used to be backed by gold, mm -hmm. which made everything make sense. Now it's backed by the Federal Reserve, which is just printing money, mm -hmm. which makes money. It's like now their money doesn't even make sense. It's like worthless. You mm -hmm. feel me? So now you're paying six dollars a gallon for gas, five fifty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're like, what the fuck? This shit used to be a dollar twenty eight when I used to yeah. grow, or two dollars under that. You know? Remember? Yeah, yeah. I used to miss so, those fucking gas. But days, but bro. you don't miss that. You miss the price of the dollar not being inflated the way it is, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I bet. I bet all the people would be so happy in this world right now if that wasn't going on. Yeah. And I think that's the main conflict and the main issue if you really want to be real. Yeah, I mean, to go to other states and see gas below $3 and then come back over here and pay over 5 it's like, what the fuck? 
Bro, some people are paying dollar fifty. It's I mean, dollar seventy five, two dollars still in some parts of the country too. Yeah, because uh, at least California is double, but still in Texas mm. they're paying a dollar thirty four. You feel me? Mm. Uh, like not even too long ago, now they're paying three fifty for uh, three fifty uh, two dollars two ninety nine two fifty for gas. Yeah, and in Texas you got to drive. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So uh, they're annoyed by it. Yeah, but I feel like if we actually backed it by something that actually meant something like you know how bitcoin every single thing is going up mm -hmm. right now cryptocurrency is actually backed by actually people putting money into it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when they get the amount of money they can uh, always put it on certain like coins and stuff which makes the stock rise of the coin which mm -hmm. puts weight on the coin and they can sell it or they can keep it when it drops people buy more of it and yeah. they keep it and it goes up and they sell it but they you know what i mean yeah that's always making money influencing but if you have a dollar it, like cash is good. Yeah. Cash is good because you never know if everything crashes and you have cash and then the price of the dollar is actually the price of the dollar again. You know how rich you would be? Yeah. <laughs> you have money. So my rich friends always tell me right now, like my really wealthy friends, I'm not talking about millionaires. I'm talking about billionaires right here. They're telling me, Muhammad, save your fucking money. Like in cash. And then when uh, his recession, buy properties, buy land. And when you, people will sell because they have to pay bills, right? Yeah. And when you buy that land, when it gets out of that situation, the land goes what? Triple, quadruple. Uh -huh. Your money is making yourself money at this point. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the correct way to do yeah. it. No, I agree. That's smart, bro. And, and that's the that's right thing to do. That's crazy how we just got into that conversation <laughs> talking about TikTok, bro. Yeah. But, you know, shout out to everyone who relies on TikTok. I hope something works out to where you guys can still get yours. You know what I mean? But... What advice would you give those people that just don't know what the fuck to do right now? I just hope you guys are really taking advantage of your influencing and uh, getting at, uh, sponsorships. You know, reach out to companies, tell them yet yeah, you'll you'll shout your your business out on your platform X O Y and Z and create money. You know, create backup money, then start a business while you're still doing all this extra shit because you have motion when. When you have motion on social media, bro, you can make a lot of money. You can literally make easy fucking money from your fucking phone and maximize that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know how many before, people I see with millions of followers on Instagram? Mm -hmm. The actual followers, real followers, they don't make no money. They don't they They're don't know how to Yeah. Like they don't know how to capitalize from it. Yeah. They don't know how to like really do the sponsorships or go reach out to the sponsorship cuz they're getting really good views, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Getting good content. And they're just like, oh, I'm just going to get the money off here. But at the end of the day, you can create something so dope from being on social media to doing commercials and getting yeah. paid high dollars and bring it onto your own platform. Now you're rocking that. And then your whole people, influencers are rocking that too. That's what yeah. they want, right? Right. And that's how you really capitalize on making money. So if you're out there and you even have 10,000 uh, like followers, you get 5% of those 10,000 followers to pay you every single month. I bet you make good living. You know what yeah. I mean? It's called capitalizing. Yeah. And how you do that is if you find things you love, you connect with those things and you bring it onto your platform and then people will buy it organic because you're not really selling it. You're embodying it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, bro. So yeah, make sure you guys start thinking of plan B and plan C just in case TikTok fails. You know what I mean? Um, and then shout out to Ann Martin, everyone that that's successful and- and doing all their things. That I'm, they need I'm to glad do. he told me. Uh, I'm glad he told me that, like, uh, his perspective. Cause I, I was like, damn, they're gonna take it off. A lot of people are gonna be mad that on there. Then I started realizing people with big influences on Instagram are, and YouTube are gonna get a lot of money from this going yeah. into it. Cause that social's gonna go over there. You know what I mean? But yeah. I hope TikTok doesn't go anywhere. People like it. Don't take it away from the people. That's what I would tell them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But hell yeah. You never know how this. We don't. We mean you don't control the world yet. So yeah. Did you you see that thing about uh, Joe Rogan and that guy that he interviewed and he became and then oh that guy that was a murderer yeah, after and bro. he like they found body parts of some dude at his freeze in his freezer in his apartment yeah all cut was up it in New shit. York I don't know where it was but I seen that trending right now bro that's just crazy because I did watch a few clips of him talking about you know when he was in his interview and it just shows like you know it just clips something that he said. But my thing was observing the type of individual he was while he spoke and shit. How he speaking? Tell and us about it. Very intelligent, bro. Very aware, you know, very intelligent. So it, it trips me out that, boom, weeks later, bro's arrested for cutting someone up by the piece and then just trying to, you know. That's sick. And they have him on camera, switching outfits in between, taking the shit out of his apartment and shit like that. But also, too, you got to think, like, 
a lot of murderers and serial killers are intelligent. They are, um, how do you say, not outsmoked. They're very con uh, reserved, very like. Do you, you think know? a serial killer is at home right now? Plotting his next shit right now as you speak. Well, that's kind of how that's it becomes. That's scary. That's wild, yeah, bro. Yeah, so like if you don't know like... Tonight my next victim's going to be an old lady. So if, <laughs> so if you don't know like... Wild. Serial, a murderer is someone that just kills. If you guys don't know this, a murderer is someone that just killed someone, whatever, shot someone, ran someone, whatever. You just murdered someone. But when you become a serial killer, that's when you're doing the same... You have the same motive. You know, you, you, you're OCD with it. It's, it's, it's planned out. You know what I mean? Like that's, Dexter. Yeah, so that's how you become a serial killer, and then yeah, bro, it's just crazy. You ever watch Dexter? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Dexter is remember. a classic. So Dexter was a serial killer, uh -huh. and it was made a, a. It was one of the most popular TV shows, maybe like ten years ago. Uh -huh. So pretty, maybe even longer now. So pretty much, Dexter would he would lived in Miami, and when he had like he just something in him just liked the feeling of killing. Oh, feel me? And his dad knew that, so he would take him hunting and stuff. He was like, son. He's trying to keep him, but the dad died. Then Dexter was a, he worked for the uh, Miami. Um, you know how the people uh, like do the murder stuff, like uh, autopsy. What is it? Uh, like they go to the murder scene, and then they, they he was a, not a detective, but pretty much as a crime scene person, right? But he was really good at his job because he was a serial killer, right? Oh, shit. So he was he would kill people in a certain way. He had every way to kill somebody, right? Yeah. Like he had different ways that we would do it, right? But he would kill different type of individuals. It was weird how you, you got to watch it more. Yeah, yeah. But uh, pretty much he would plan every single kill out. Then when he would go to his day job, right? They were like the suspect's blood got killed right here because he would see it how it would happen. He was like he got stabbed right here. The blood's on the wall. Then he fell right here. You see the, he passed a broken chair or whatever, or this thing right there. Then he headed to the kitchen, and then he picked up something. Then uh, then you could see someone finished him off right here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck like, type of shit is this? Like, yeah. But it's crazy because he's the one that's not doing it, but he does things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's crazy how even people's mind thinks. I think there's more beautiful in this world than ugly because... I really truly feel if you kill somebody, one person, you kill all humanity. Yeah. And but if you save one person's life, you save all humanity's life, bro. That's mm -hmm. how I, I really true because it's the universe. We're all one. It's a one yeah. song thing. But there's crazy motherfuckers out there. Yeah, bro, yeah. That get off on their shit. And how do you feel about that? Like living in the world like that. I mean, it's like there's seven billion of us. Yeah. No. What's I the mean, percent of killers uh, in this world? Look at all the staff for that. I bet you it's there's like, definitely a stat for that. Like one out of a hundred people, or one out of what is it? What is that? I want to know like how stat. I feel about that, bro. I just feel like you. One out of one hundred is crazy. Yeah, I just feel like you got <laughs> you got to be on your toes, bro. You got to know who to fuck with. You got to be able to read people, and you got to be able to move safe, bro. Like, what's one thing in the movies of action or or stupid killing movies that happens? The people that are being killed are dumb. You know what I mean? Like, don't go in there. Don't yeah, go in there. Don't go. You know not to go in there. Anyone else in there? You they know what die. What are you just what saying? There, like, what is it? 0 0.06. 0 0.06 of the world. Less than oh, in the U.S. only. Yeah. So less than one, oh, like 0 0.5 percent of us are killers in this world in yeah. the United States right now. So let's just say if that's if there's a billion, what is that like? Five hundred. Is that about five hundred? More. More. Five thousand. Well, it's .05. You know how many people are in jail for murder right now? A lot. Be like 5,000? You said .05. No, a billion. You do the math. Yeah, Just do the math. Because you said .05. Hey, guys, thank you for really fucking with us like being on this pod. Maybe 50 or 60. Maybe. Or I'm thinking 5,000, but... Aldo, 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 this is how you do it. Ask your phone what's .6%. Aldo. Ask no, your phone what's point six. Hey, Aldo, ask your phone. Let me do it, you host. Yeah, do it. <laughs> what's point six percent of eight billion? Forty-eight million. You said point oh. Point six. Point six. No, if you have to put. You said point six of the United States. <laughs> what's you the said world? Point oh six or point six? Point oh six. Oh six. <laughs> Do the fucking math. What's 0. 0.06 of 8 billion? What's 0.06% of 8 billion? Uh, 4.8 million. Fucking told you. I'm so, a numbers guy, bro. So look. So what, did I not call that? Yes, sir. So four point eight, uh, 4.8 million of the whole percent of the world. So 40... 
Four million, about five million people. Five in this, million. They just bro. say five million. Five million people in this world are fucking killers. Yeah. You crazy sick fucks. Watch that's a high. Out. That's, that's a, a high ass that's number. That's why the jails are so fucking packed and they're still building more. How many people aren't caught though? Shit, I'd say at least like nowadays, like twenty percent is not getting back caught. Back then, back then. It was no, like, back then you get away with that bitch. Yeah. Back then I'd get away with this shit if I, you know what I'm saying. Back then. Back then. <laughs> yeah, but nowadays, bro. Hey, there's a lot of shit back then, huh? Yeah. There's cameras everywhere, bro. Cameras everywhere. They use cell phone towers to ping cell phones. Cars. They could track cars. You're, you're so rap. Bro, imagine you're... Like, this is so random, but imagine, like, your great-grandpa had Instagram, and then he had, they had, like, OnlyFans mm -hmm. and stuff, right? And, like, pretty much, how would you, like, think about that? Because, look, you're that generation. Yeah. So think about it. I'd be like, damn, this world is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> this world ain't what it is. There ain't no morals nowadays. We got, we got four, five you got, million killers. We got more trappers nowadays than fucking real businessmen. Bro. No, we got more, trapp we got more trappers than uh, plumbers. Yeah, facts. <laughs> That's funny. Like, There's more trappers than plumbers out there, for sure. Hey, I feel like uh, like this world handy... didn't get that much. It got better, but it also got more expensive. You know what I'm saying? Like no, it didn't get the inflation. Uh, inflation went high because there's nothing backed by whatever. It could totally be fixed, bro. You know what I mean? But no one, want, no those people don't want it to fix. Yeah, because uh, the trust fund be hitting different. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate y'all for even fucking with us. Hopefully, you got a good recap of what we've been doing. Yeah. Uh, excited for Bird to start streaming on air next uh, week. Stay ready for our two grammars, our live resin cards, live rosin cards, two gram, two gram melted diamond cart, yeah, bunch of other dope shit that's going on right now. So everything should be rolling out pretty soon. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for joining us in on our previous podcast. The only thing I would love for you guys to do, <laughs> excuse me, that my birthday just passed. So yep. Happy belated to Happy me again. <laughs> so, hey, my birthday was lit, Ron. I got a beach house in Malibu. No, I, I really liked it because it was just the homies and we we're all just talking and chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't much going on. I, I fucked with How it. How the food? It was fucking amazing. I took it to go play, baby. Yeah. Right when I got there, bro, you guys were all down there. I got my plate. I was like, yo, this is fire. And I, I told Mac, I was like, yo, let me put it to go play in your car, bro, because I'm going to get lit and forget. And I did. Before anyone, yes, sir. Nah, it was such a vibe, bro. The bartenders were cool. Mm -hmm. We were Pat smoking Kush. The sunset was hitting. Yeah. The view was nice. You know what I mean? And coming in on um, that Monday, moving the offices, hitting Hall of Flowers. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, I have to go see Exhibit open his new dispensary with Eminem and everybody. That's fucking legendary That's as fuck, isn't it? Yeah. So I get to do this every single day. And I gl I'm glad I get to share it with you guys so you can live through us. You know what I mean? So... A uh, new skews dropping. Tune into that. Tune into Bodega AMG 420 event as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We love you. Appreciate you guys. And go ahead and comment for us and subscribe for us. That's the only birthday present I want. I subscribe. Share this video. Yeah. Tell the homie to subscribe. Shout go to, your, out to everyone that drops a go, comment. Go to your homie's phone. Get that bitch. Be like, bro, you yeah. ain't subscribed to To Be Blunt. And we're big. I mean, you're not subscribed to Big Chief and watch To Be Blunt. What are yeah. you doing, bro? Yeah, go create a fake account too. You know, <laughs> don't up, do that. Tell sub, the homie that actually. Like, you doing? Like all our shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And Man, yeah, just run it up for us. Go. Appreciate you guys. Love Peace. you guys. See ya. Hey, I, I talked to Damien yesterday. Lama, lama, red pajama. I feel along with I'm a mama. Uh huh, uh huh. Baby, lama wanna change. Lama, lama, at the scene. Uh huh, uh huh.